Warm greetings to you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. George Xavier Cruz, and today I'll be leading you in a discussion of high dependency anemia. Now, before we start off with discussing the pathology, first of all, we'd ask ourselves who do we know who has suffered from high dependency anemia? Here we have Selena Gomez, who is a very popular and well known actress who suffered from the pathology, unfortunately, and for the sake of association, I would like for you guys to always associate eye deficiency with Selena Gomez. I find it easier to associate various things with other learning points. So basically, before I start to discuss the concerning issues related to the pathology of eye deficiency anemia, first of all, it will be good for us to discuss the physiology. So in terms of function in the body, ion is responsible for several functions such as RBC formation, immune function, as well as brain function, muscle function, as well as energy production. <clears throat> now, in this depiction, let's just say we can imagine we have a hypothetical person who's 70 kilograms, and they have around 4 grams total iron body in, inside their body, right? And <clears throat> usually what we have is always a balance between your absorption and your body losses. So which can be depicted here. So usually you can absorb right about one to two milligrams daily and that can be uh, later be excreted via various mechanisms, approximately one to two milligrams. And in plasma, we always have approximately four milligrams. Now, although the body only needs about one milligram of iron every day to be in balance, the eternal demand for iron is far much higher around 20 to 25 milligrams so each day 0.8 percent of the red blood cells are destroyed and replaced by uh, <clears throat> replaced since each erythrocyte has about 120 uh, in terms of uh, its lifetime with a daily turnover <clears throat> of 20 milligrams of for hemoglobin synthesis and a breakdown and another five milligrams for other needs a guy with five liters of blood of volume and is 2.5 grams of iron integrated into his hemoglobin. The majority of this iron gets recycled in plasma and when iron ex that exceeds the needs of the body is usually stored up as ferritin or hemosiderin. Ferritin is a very very important uh, protein that you would be well I'll also discuss a little bit further but it's quite important so just remember about so as I already explained, some of it goes into RBC um, construction or production and then from destruction we get some uh, of the <coughs> of the iron which is uh, which is produced and which would be found in plasma and either it would be stored up as ferritin or hemosiderin or as uh, it'd be used in either respiratory enzymes or mitochondria. Alright. So by definition, right, anemia is basically when you have a decreased amount of hemoglobins. Uh, in females, it's usually uh, less than 11.5 grams per deciliter. In males, 18 grams per deciliter. So these values can vary depending with your location, country, guidelines. But in general, this is the view that we can take. So in terms of classification, we have a uh, nomocytic, um, in terms of classification of all anemias, right? We have nomochromic, nomocytic anemia, meaning that their color is normal. So chrome, with, from, from the Greek word, uh, which is related to color. Uh, so nomochromic, so the color is normal. And nomocytic, meaning the, the size and the shape of, of the RBCs are normal. So they are a lot of examples of normocytic anemia, normochromic normocytic anemia, which we won't be discussing today. Uh, usually for normocytic, um, so the normal uh, MCV, which is the mean corpuscular volume, is usually uh, between 80 to 95 femtoliters, and in terms of um, the mean concentration of hemoglobin, it's usually between 28 to 32 5 grams. Now, the second classification is hypochromic microcytic anemia, which is to mean that the color is slightly reduced and in terms of size, it's also slightly reduced. So a good, good example would be iron deficiency anemia, which is what we're going to discuss today. 
Uh, and then there are also other examples of hypochromic microcellular anemia, such as thalassemias, uh, which we won't be discussing today. And then we have micro macrocytic uh, <clears throat> hypochromic anemias, which have increased MCV and increased MCH, uh, which can be uh, seen in B12 um, deficiency or folate deficiency. All right, so now just diving into the pathophysiology of iron. Uh, deficiency anemia. There are different mechanisms that can occur for you to be deficient or to have a depletion of iron stores. So the first one, which can be the common one depending with age of course, uh, is poor nutritional intake. Now usually your <clears throat> if dietary habits are deficient of meat, fish, legumes or iron fortified foods, which is quite common in vegetarians or people uh, were living in, in poor conditions or, 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 <coughs> or poor in general, uh, there are low iron reserves, which results uh, in a demand that exceeds the supply. So remember that uh, your iron is going to be used in various things. So that demand will always be there, regardless of how much iron you eat. So if the demand exceeds the supply, then you have iron deficiency. The second example that we have is blood loss. Now, this example we can see, especially in women uh, who have heavy menstrual bleeding, which is known as menorrhagia, or basically it can occur when someone is having um, any sort of bleeding. But I'm just saying, uh, as a common example in clinical practice, we usually see it with menorrhagia. So the mechanism is, <clears throat> is seen as there's a decrease in, in iron reserves at a quicker rate than can be replenished, which would simultaneously uh, raise the body's need for iron. So same same, same idea that there's going to be uh, <clears throat> uh, a lack of uh, supply that is present for the anemia and uh, there's an increase in the decrease of the reserves of anemia which is commonly seen in, in mineral archaea. Okay and then the other examples that we can have can be metabolic or functional and that there's inadequate transport to the bone marrow. So in this case, your iron is going to be present, everything is going to be fine, but then delivery through the bone marrow for the use of, of RBCs is going to be hindered by various chemical mechanisms, which we will not get into. And then we can also have impaired utilization inside the bone marrow. So first of all, your iron has been transferred or transported using transferrin, which is a protein, and then so it arrives in the bone marrow but it's not being used adequately. So iron reserves are sufficient to satisfy the body's requirement, but poor iron utilization um, in the bone marrow for the production of RBCs is what, would, what can occur. All right, so in terms of, uh, so this is just some of the causes in general, dietary causes, as I already explained, blood loss, um, or even uh, GIT causes such as duodenal ulcers, gastro, um, gastric ulcers, uh, GIT neoplasms, uh, diabetic related disease, colitis, and your dysplasia. So most of these are also linked to some extent. It can be a problem with um, malabsorption as a part of physiology problem, or it can actually be that there's a lot of blood loss that is happening. Or the patient is also going to be not so able to eat, so it will be a mixture of mechanisms. Uh, another problem can be with, with par partial uh, gastrectomy or celiac disease and cross disease, uh, the main mechanism underlying these conditions would mainly be a uh, malabsorption problem. All right, so in terms of clinical effects, we know that hemoglobin carries oxygen. Therefore, if there's uh, reduced oxygen, basically the body is in a hypoxic state. And then um, if hypoxia continues or is, is severe, uh, the body can then um, have other problems that can potentially occur. If it's exercise, then you can have lactic acid buildup or, <clears throat> or it can be other compensatory mechanisms that can be developed. Now, other things that can occur in, in terms of clinical effects would include fatigue, uh, breathlessness, and dizziness, and this is all related to hypoxia. And then hemoglobin also is the one that's responsible for providing the red color. So in, in cases of uh, a deficiency in in in, the, in 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 hemoglobin, you can get polyp of the skin and mucous membrane. So, in terms of uh, clinical examination, it's usually evident when you 
check the conjunctiva of your patients. So it's usually going to be pale. Or in, in palms of, of other patients, they can usually be pale. So these are the signs that we can usually see. All right, and then other clinical features can include angulonculitis, atrophic glossitis, brittle nails, colonychia, and, and pica. So basically, pica is a condition whereby uh, there is a certain urge to eat non-nutritional food or not even food and non-nutritional substances such as ice for example there can be a certain urge to eat ice or or other or other weird weird things all right so in terms of diagnosis basically uh what would be done is to uh do your complete blood count a peripheral blood smear uh, get your total serum iron total iron binding capacity uh, which is mainly dependent on transfer <clears throat> and then your ferritin and then uh, reticular site uh, as well so in terms of the cbc's for iron deficiency anemia we can normally get the following so a, a low mean capacitor volume a low mean capacitor hemoglobin concentration in some cases or many cases you can actually get an elevated uh, platelet count or normal elevated wbc what I want you to remember is mostly about high MCV and high MCH. And then in terms of the peripheral blood smear, you can get a uh, microcytic hypochromic, especially in chronic cases. And then results of iron studies would be as follows. Of course, you'd have your low iron and then uh, your ferritin <coughs> uh, would be low. And then you'd have a, an elevated total iron binding capacity. Um, the reason why is because remember that I mentioned to you that total iron binding capacity is connected with transferrin, right? So usually transferrin as a protein is produced in the liver and in normal cases, if there's adequate iron, there's not an increased amount of transferrin that's produced. But as a compensatory mechanism, if there's reduced iron, or if the iron stores have been greatly reduced and the liver has been notified by the body to increase uh, production of transferrin, that means that there's more transferrin present to try and uh, transport or try and get more iron. But unfortunately, uh, the iron is not present due to various pathophysiological mechanisms. Hence, you'd get an increased total iron binding capacity because the people, or not the people, but the protein that is uh, responsible to, for, for transportation of iron is increased in great amounts. Uh, and then a normal serum ferritin can be seen in patients who have uh, deficient iron with coexistent diseases such as hepatitis or anemia of chronic diseases. The reason why is because when you have chronic inflammation, uh, <clears throat> Due to various pathophysiological mechanisms, um, iron is going to be hindered from getting into the plasma and more food is going to be stored. It's sort of like a mechanism for the body to protect itself because some bacteria, for example, bacteria or some organisms are well dependent on iron. So if there's a reduced amount of iron present, there's a high probability of, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the organisms dying due to inadequate iron all right so in terms of treatment usually we can just give her a sulfate uh, which can be done orally or by infusion okay so we'll just do one question uh, for us to just explain and discuss um, issues related to, <clears throat> to iron deficiency anemia so we have a 30 year, 30 year old lady who lives in the basement was unemployed so this lady first of all is unemployed um, and suffers from malnutrition for previous six months she has complained of general weakness hair loss brittle nails and adores eating chalk so this is a classic scenario of iron deficiency anemia you can potentially see it in the mcqs or amount of choice questions uh, first of all this lady is living in a poor condition that's one and then the diet is not so good so remember i talked about how iron can develop due to inadequate diet or poor nutrition right so that's one that's another thing in support of the diagnosis 
and the symptoms as well which is weak hair loss brittle nails and pica so this the way they inform you that she adores eating chalk so it's not quite normal for, for someone to be adoring such an activity uh, anyway so this is the only example i have for you today related to iron deficiency anemia um if uh if you like the lecture, please comment, share with your friends so that I can continue making more lectures for you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Don't forget. All right.